Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Rebels Compass again this week. I'm very excited to have Leslie Holcup with me this morning and also Susanna McCann, who is with us all the way from Iowa. Uh, we're going to talk about a retreat that Leslie and Suzanne are bringing to Carp Ridge Wellness Center. And first of all, I want to speak to Leslie and say good morning, Leslie. Oh, good morning, Karen. And so can you tell me a little bit about this retreat and what brought, how you connected with Suzanne to be able to bring this uh, retreat to Carp? Ah, yes. It was about uh, five years ago. Uh, Linda Lang and I collaborated uh, and we brought Susanna in from Iowa to, to do a whole body goddess uh, workshop. And uh, so that's when we, we first crossed paths and we, uh, we co completely loved her work and what she had to share and the profound uh, knowledge she had to share for women. Um, we did see uh, some women's lives really changed from the work that weekend, including myself. So uh, with the times now and all the shift going on with feminine energy on the planet, um, I really had a, a strong feeling that it was time to bring Susanna back and to uh, bring her teachings back to Canada. So uh, we organized the retreat and uh, we're really excited to have her coming back. That's amazing. Well, good morning, Susanna. How are you in Iowa? Yes, it's beautiful here too this morning. The snow is finally going. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> so this, uh, workshop this uh, weekend retreat this divine connection to the divine goddess and um, awakening to that feminine energy that for many of us we've suppressed for so long um, can you tell me a little bit about this workshop that you are offering and the, a little bit about your journey that you've been on Mm hmm Yes. Yes. He's teaching meditation than I could as a clinical psychologist at that time. Yes. So I went very, very deeply into the Vedic tradition and um, meditation practice and teaching. I taught meditation professionally for probably a couple of decades and did many long, very deep meditation retreats secluded. But I had the feeling that I really wanted integration of the spiritual development with outer living. Mm -hmm. and specifically, I wanted um, I wanted uh, what you could call a, a relationship that integrated sexuality and spirituality. I wanted a very profound connection with a partner rather than continuing on the sort of celibate reclusive path. Okay. And so I came out of that after about three years of an extremely intensive meditation program and had all kinds of adventures after that in my personal <laughs> life being married studying sacred sexuality a lot behind the scenes um, also developing a strong qigong practice yeah. and getting a lot of rootedness in taoism and one thing i liked about taoism is that the knowledge is very consciously mapped onto the, the body. 
the philosophy, incredible as it is, is not just philosophy, but it's, it's tied into the incredible knowledge that they have in traditional Chinese medicine of the human physiology and the energy flow through the body and so forth. Yes. And so I draw very strongly from Taoist Qigong in my teaching. And i studying different approaches to sacred sexuality that started to emerge in the marketplace, you might say, over the years. Back mm-hmm. when I started, there was absolutely nothing. That was a long time ago. Since then, knowledge has emerged, and I have been working with a good way to present that in our culture in the West. Some of it I wasn't completely comfortable with, but I was looking for real profound integration. Okay. I love the term you have for your, radio, for your show. Rebels Compass, Rebels Compass. compass. Yes. Because it is a time of cultural upheaval. Exactly. Our compass, when the old paths no longer really work. Absolutely. Time, you know, it's a very um, tumultuous time in a sense. Mm-hmm. And we need to find new ways, new paths. And that's what I'm teaching, and I'm wanting to teach it in a very accessible way. Okay. So... Um, when people come to Cartbridge Wellness Center for this uh, workshop that you're offering with Leslie, what type of thing can they expect to awaken to uh, within this workshop? Well, for one thing, you can expect to have a very different relationship with your body. In our culture, we think of these physical bodies as objects. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of pain in the realm of relationships and sexuality around that because it's really too narrow for the truth of the human being, in a sense, Mm -hmm. to be thinking of these instruments of experience that we have, our human bodies, just in terms of objects. Certainly that physical level has its own level of reality And it's very powerful and important level for our development in some traditions, like in the Vedic tradition. The understanding is that with that, this human physiology as an instrument of experience, this gives us the opportunity for really fast development. Mm -hmm. It's very fortunate now because we need fast development to keep up with the rapid pace of change and to develop as human beings in time to jump in and save our planet, so to speak. Yes. And I so agree. the cornerstone of this is integration of spirituality and physicality and awakening the feminine values, anchoring that in our body and really really honoring the gifts of the feminine on the level of our own body. Mm -hmm. Going to be a lot of embodied spiritual, you know, spirituality or just fun and ease in the body and specifically healing with regard to the female organs. Okay. In my, the basic whole body goddess workshop that I teach which will be incorporated into this retreat. This retreat's a little broader than that. Women learn very specific, powerful, holistic modalities for healing of the, and really connecting with the female organs, mm-hmm. really opening up to the cosmic import and the cosmic truth of these female organs. Mm-hmm. and having a whole different context for appreciating ourselves as women, honoring ourselves as women, inhabiting our bodies, and that gives a lot of power 
a lot of self-authority, you know, here I stand kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And when we're cut off from our bodies as women in particular, well, really both sexes are taught to be somewhat, you know, heady and out of the body yeah. in this patriarchal system. Yeah. Ben and I were actually having a conversation last week from a video that he'd watched on TV and it was from the 1930s and how proper everybody looked within this video and um, particularly the women. You know, we've gone from being very suppressed and compressed and like you say, totally detached from our uh, physicality and our spirituality and the... Um, the sacredness of who we are as women um, to being, uh, you know, from going from that very closed off position of just being uh, the cook, the wife, the child bearer, and nothing more than that. You know, and we've over the years, over the generations, we've claimed our power back. But now we've come to a time I find particularly with young women now, uh, my daughter-in-law mm -hmm. is amazing for that. She stepped into her power. She says who she is and claims who she is um, and w women are slowly waking up to that but they need to do that in a really positive way I, I think we've gone from the women's lib and the you know I want to be just like a man but treated like a woman <laughs> to wanting to be actually who we are yes and opening up to the depths of who we are as women yes the cultural stereotype approach is totally defunct at this point. You know, it, it really doesn't work very well. I mean, it, it, there's some aspects of it that work for manipulation, mm -hmm. and, you know, and that kind of thing, but that's not what we need right now. No, no, I agree. We need to, uh, to this has been a personal journey for me, um, stepping more into my own personal power and pulling away my own uh, blocks and limitations and my own personal judgments of myself and pulling them away and, and, and looking at who I really am underneath all of that uh, and Beautiful. doing that personal journey within. And it, it's doing that personal journey within that awakens all of that. You, can, yes. you, can't, you can't do this journey outside of yourself looking to be fixed. It has to be something that you journey within yourself and bring out, not something out that you bring in. Beautiful, Karen. And I completely, you know, we're totally in sync on that. I agree mm -hmm. with you completely. Yeah. So f for me, these workshops are absolutely um, needed right now. Um, mm -hmm. And this is how Rebels Compass started. My friend and I, Mel, we wanted to create this platform where we could um, bring people like yourself and bring awareness to people that have started to feel that spark within that push or that pull in a direction to know that things that they're doing in their life really aren't working for them anymore old patterns of doing things really aren't working for them anymore but where do they go to find information how do they do that how do they start that journey within because i know for many when i speak to them they, they when somebody says that all saying oh just let it go you know, some things you can't just let go. Something mm -hmm. you, you have to do that journey within yourself to find out the cause of where it started so that you can actually release it and empower yourself to let that go. Yes, very true. And most of us have done, you know, quite a bit of work on maybe some spiritual practice, some yoga, some inner sort of psychological clearing of emotional beliefs, you know, that are holding us back and stuck emotions and that, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And we've done work on those levels and we, you know, say yoga or Qigong or something in even getting more exercise, you know, those kinds of things can help us get into our body more. Mm -hmm. And this special attention to the female organs and integrating the wisdom and the, the being in that and integrating the wisdom from that opens up a whole new 
expanse mm -hmm. of connection with the earth and with nature and so forth. Um, that so I was just going to ask Leslie about um, her. Ex I know you went five. You said you went five years ago, and mm -hmm. your experience with this workshop. I remember you actually going to that workshop and coming back <laughs> really uh, quite. Um, blown away. <laughs> uh, blown away, very um, animated about the experience mm -hmm. and what a profound effect it had on you at that time of that. Mm -hmm. But you also said that it, uh, there was a point that it made you feel uncomfortable too. Mm -hmm. So I think within this workshop, uh, we have to be uncomfortable to be able to break through those blocks, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, I think mm -hmm. that feeling of feeling uncomfortable is knowing that you're in that position where you either make the choice to go back to the mm -hmm. same as you've always done or break through that uncomfortable feeling to break through beyond well, that. Exactly. Well, and certainly it pushed pushed all of our boundaries, all of our limits. We didn't mm -hmm. really know at what we were getting into at that time. Uh, and it was way beyond what I, you know, ever expected. But the, the teachings and the information that Susanna shared, I... I um, it really shifted my perspective of the divine feminine energy and how to access it. And really, to be honest, on a more personal level, I started my journey back then five years ago, but I had some completion to mm -hmm. do myself. Um, I, inter I integrated some of the practices into my life. I saw the practices and the teachings change other people's lives, uh, and yet I wasn't fully able to... Um, incorporated into my own life i did to some degree but really you know i guess we all think the things that we bring in are also for ourselves normally too Absolutely. so i i myself am so excited to bring susanna back so that i can continue my work and truly on a deep level embody the feminine energy um, and take my whole relationship with myself and my partner to a whole different, different like a level. whole elevated level yeah, I know that potential exists and it in my being I know it's time to really do it and to access it. It you know, no more time for, for waiting and putting it off. It's time to, to truly embody it and to do it. So and I, I maybe I'm feeling that other women uh may be sitting in the same sort of a place. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they don't know what to do. They don't know how to make change. They don't know how to really truly change those beliefs that have held us back as far as being women. And what that really means in a relationship, what that means to ourselves. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so that's, that's really, so Suzanne, is there an age limit for this kind of workshop and the work that you do? Is there an age limit for it? Is there, oh, there's no age limit. No age limit. No. In fact, one of the, well, it's been especially valuable for postmenopausal women. Okay. Mm -hmm. On a physical level, a number of women have gotten some healing from things like vaginal atrophy or um, issues that might be interfering with their sex life. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, you can't say exactly what anybody's going to get. No. What the results exactly are going to be for anybody. But um, many postmenopausal women who've done my workshops have been able to shift on a physical level. Mm -hmm. um, to rejuvenate some and restore their sex life and improve it. So that's one possible benefit that some women could get. Yeah. I really acknowledge and applaud Leslie is just on this and she's such a uh, a champion for personal development, her own mm -hmm. and her people. She shares this, you know, she shares what she finds with other people. And I really appreciate her tenacity in this and bringing me back because we in our culture don't have ways to, there's no cultural support for the kind of development that we as women need. There's very little cultural support for that. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy for women to attend a workshop and 
benefit from it. Some might incorporate some things, but one of the things that I'm doing now is providing more of a framework for ongoing support. Right. In that vein, the Friday night before the Saturday and Sunday retreat, I'm also doing a, a talk that's open to the public. Oh, that's fantastic. On sacred mm -hmm. sexuality. And it's called Where Angels Fear to Tread. <laughs> Good title. Well, you know, most of the people that are attracted to my work have quite a bit of background in spiritual development and personal growth and that kind of thing. And sort of the, the most challenging integration is integration of sexuality and embodiment. And so I'm giving sort of an introduction to sacred sexuality. Mm -hmm. And that's at a different location I think Leslie can give you. The Living Science Center in Stittsville. Right, Living Science Center in Stittsville. And for that, I'm especially inviting the women who are going to the retreat, especially if you have a partner, to bring that partner to the introductory meeting. Okay. That'll make it easier. The partner will know, you know, sort of what you're getting into and the basic approach of this. And, you know, I'm working quite a bit to make this very accessible. Where angels fear to tread, that sort of acknowledges that, yes, we have taboos around this area. Mm -hmm. Be uncomfortable getting up to that, those places where we have blocks and so forth. I try to make this as gentle and um, accessible as possible. And I think that people come out of it being glad that they did what they did. This is definitely not, uh, the approach I'm taking is not get in there and figure out how to have better orgasms. That's not the angle, you know. Yes. It's not like an orgy type thing or anything remotely <laughs> in that direction. <laughs> but it is very profound. It does engage the sexual energies to some degree. But, you know, sexuality is basically the life force. Mm -hmm. And when we cut that off, as many of the spiritual programs and the old religions uh, have done, then we don't get rid of the problem by ignoring it. We don't integrate, um, you know, we don't get integrated by cutting it off. Mm -hmm. Comes a positive force when it's integrated with the totality of our human life and, and where it is part of that shining of wholeness, holiness. That's why we call it sacred sexuality because of the integration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I appreciate Leslie's, you know, honesty and, you know, mentioning that, yes, there's some discomfort there. Um, and I, we don't ask people to go beyond their comfort level. No. Be, be exploratory, but, you know, we aren't rushing in like fools. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we're human beings with human bodies, and so it's, it's fine for us to go there. But it's true that we do want to be, we want to have conditions and safety and total respect, total honoring of where people are right now, and then gentle guidance into mm -hmm. deeper explorations. And, you know, as Leslie said, you know, a lot of people have said they're very surprised at how impactful and how much this can actually open up for people. Mm -hmm. It's good that you're having that uh, open conversation the day before where it's open to uh, partners, husbands, boyfriends, etc., to um, engage in that conversation. I mean, many yes, of us I'm are looking okay. for that deeper connection in a relationship, not just a surface relationship. And I think for so many in the past, that's exactly, you know, you, you think you fall in love, you, you have this experience and all too quickly it disappears and you're moving on to the next one. It, it's trying to build that relationship with yourself. 
and honoring that relationship with yourself and then connecting with someone who is in in the same vibration you know and being able to create that relationship in a sacred way right and we've done a lot you know every human being has both a masculine and feminine side yes and the women have had to be developing their masculine side more which is a good thing to be able to function in the world in a way that we can eventually turn to more better balance for everybody you know mm-hmm. women have had to take on a lot of masculine energy and possibly leave quite a bit of their feminine selves behind mm-hmm. so what we really need is both sexes being comfortable and with both domains and in balance and whatever is appropriate for the individual, the balance that's appropriate for the individual. But what's happened to some degree, you know, is that we've gotten to be, you know, two sort of quasi androgynous people living in a good, a good partnership. You know, some, some couples have sort of evolved to that point in a sense, but with each one, maybe, not as thoroughly as deeply in touch with their own um, with the polarity the masculine and feminine polarity Mm -hmm. can be reduced as both of members of the couple integrate the masculine and feminine within themselves and so Mm -hmm. a very valuable and precious knowledge of deepening the appreciation of the of yourself and the other person and also learning how the polarity the sexual polarity works for dynamism Mm -hmm. in the relationship so that it's not necessarily such a roommate type thing yes sexual polarity also remains strong and so that's some of what we'll be going into uh, to help the women who've been in the work workshop integrate that back into their lives with their partners. Hmm. In fact, like one of the things that does weekend. strength, oh, sorry, go ahead. I said it sounds like it's going to be a very powerful weekend. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> really looking forward to it. Sorry, what was you going to say, Susanna? I, uh, we... I was just going to say that one of the ways to strengthen polarity is for women to spend time together and for men to spend time together. Mm -hmm. Um, Maybe, well, anyway, and so something like a retreat with women helps women really enliven the feminine pull of their lives and will, will teach, you know, some about the inner marriage between the inner masculine and the inner feminine. And that provides a good template for when you get reunited with your partner. Mm-hmm. The, the masculine feminine polarity, only this time it's between the two people. That's very cool. It's, I, I'm, I'm interested. I can't wait to find out what's happened. I'll have to get you back on after, we, after you've done the workshop. <laughs> and oh, you can. Okay. And, and you can tell us about the experience of the weekend at CARP and get Leslie back on. And I, like I say, I remember from the last time how um, excited she was to do this workshop. Mm-hmm. And so how can they get in touch with, so anybody that's interested in this workshop, anybody that's interested in connecting with that um, Divine Feminine and to do this workshop, how can they get in touch with you or Leslie to book into this space? And do you still have space available for this uh, workshop? Yes, we do. We do still have space. Go to my website, which is radiantembodiedwoman.com. Okay, well, we'll post that underneath. Okay, you'll type that underneath. Yes, we'll post that underneath this recording. Right. And there's a getting to the page for the retreat. 
you go to services and then claiming the power of your feminine embodiment. Mm -hmm. So you can, you can put that there for people who see this. And you can register there. There's more information about it and there's registration there. Okay. I, ha I have a question that I'm just going to throw out to you. Do we, so uh, I love all these workshops for women. I love, uh, you know, being able to um, awaken to the truth of who we are. We need workshops for men. <laughs> you yeah, know, well, we need these, these workshops. workshops for men so that they can connect to that mm -hmm. and they can because to me, it's great having uh, this ability to awaken to this power within us. But w men need to w awaken to that power within themselves too, so that you have that complete relationship, if you like. Yes, I agree. And um, we can do a lot just within ourselves. Yes, we can. Yes. Yeah. However, I agree that it really helps if the men also have their own channel for development mm -hmm. and have connected with uh, a couple of different men who have done some teaching in this area for men. And in the follow-up program, I'm, I'm, you know, following the retreat for those who are interested, there will be an ongoing program for men if there are men who are interested. That's fantastic. Because like you said, right at the very, very, very beginning of this um, uh, conversation, you, you were raised in a very uh, strict religious background. And yes. there's many, many, many of us that have been breaking through those um, blocks and boundaries and limitations for a long time of things being taboo and things being a sin and things being, you know, so it's breaking through all of that. So these yeah, workshops exactly. are amazing for that. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So is there anything else you want to add, Leslie? And um, Yeah, just a couple things. Um, uh, I just wanted to add that uh, at the workshop, Susanna uh, just creates a beautiful, uh, loving, very safe space with the participants and with the, the women that have come together uh, of like heart and like mind uh, to join together in this uh, transformational process so that the space, um, you know, uh, even though I had mentioned, yes, it's, you know, it does push you into areas where you may not have gone before and it can be a bit scary. Um, I do have to say that the space that Susanna creates is so, so safe and so beautiful. And she's so respectful as a facilitator. Mm -hmm. um, that That's one thing. Uh, another thing, too, I did want to add to something she mentioned earlier. Um, one of my good friends that came to the uh, workshop that w we did five years ago um, was able to do the practices that Susanna taught. And she was um, postmenopausal, as she mentioned, and was able to uh, do the practices and turn around her relationship and her sex life with her husband mm -hmm. by doing the daily practice. So, um, you know... That's something that I think is just amazing because, you know, there's nothing out there for that sort of thing no, for these menopause other than uh, drug therapy or, you know, hormonal uh, treatments and so on, which not everybody can do or wants to do. Mm -hmm. So these are, you know, ways we can learn to nurture ourselves and things we can do for ourselves on a daily basis as women, um, you know, bringing life force and love and energy to the female uh, part of the body um, you know, I haven't seen anybody teaching this and sharing this no, uh, to this degree. <clears throat> it's it's amazing, and it gives it just it just gives us a whole other way that we can heal and nurture ourselves. So mm -hmm. um, that's just something I wanted to add. And I just I am so deeply honored that Suzanne is coming back to be with us again at this weekend Women's Weekend Retreat uh, at Echo Wellness uh, outside Carp. It's uh, we didn't mention the date, but it's May the twenty. 5th and 26th that it's coming up and the introductory evening is in Stittsville at Living Science uh, on the evening of the 24th, the Friday evening from 7 to 9. So um, any, yeah, that anybody that is local and wants to speak to me and, and get further information about the upcoming uh, retreat, you're also welcome to contact me 
um, at innerrevelations at gmail.com. And I'd be really happy to speak with you. Yeah, and Susanna, I'm so excited about you coming to uh, be Me with too, us. Me too, Leslie. I look forward to seeing you and Linda and the others who come. This is amazing to bring this workshop, like I say, because there's so many women that are premenopausal, postmenopausal that are having these issues that affecting every aspect of their life. So to have this available to awaken that within you and even younger people before they get to that point in mm -hmm. their life, you know, so that they're, they're able to navigate the uh, time frame of getting older and doesn't necessarily mean that you have to shrivel up like a prune and, <laughs> <laughs> and not enjoy your life in the process of it. So I, I think it's very, very exciting. I, I want to say thank you so much, so Suzanne, for joining us today and for sharing some of the things that you're going to be bringing to this workshop and um i hope to meet you in person when you're here i can I'd love endeavor to, to Karen. that would be fantastic for me to come out and see you on the friday and uh, thank you to leslie for being here today and so that we can share this and let people know that this is a something that's available for them to access uh, and and to go to your website so that they can access that information and ask more questions if needed. So I want to thank you again and thank Leslie thank you, and Karen. thank uh, Vocal House Studio for being here for us today. I'm going to close this conversation with um, many blessings to you, Suzanne, and um, thank you, Karen. Thank I will you, see Leslie. you see you on the Friday. Very good. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Bye now. Bye.